I wasn't speaking to my brother, but he phoned anyway, hours before he went into the sea. I can couple this fact with what the poli Seattle policeman told me. The cop said Sonny called information and wrote my number on the wall of a bar. Beneath that, my brother scribbled, juniper tree burning, just to underline the point, to send it straight to me. The cop didn't say it, but I'm sure Sonny finished a drink, vodka probably, and that it was one of many. Because I know how it ended, I assume Sonny crossed the street and bought a ferry ticket and waited inside on a gray afternoon. Surely he ignored the tourists and commuters behind him, and surely he took a swig from that flask of his, and maybe he ha swallowed a handful of some sort of pill. He stood at the window. Sunny Boy Blue is searching for something on the other side of the glass. He watches a man on the dock finish an apple and throw the core into the water. The gulls dive for it. The man watches them bicker and the strongest one triumph. Sunny watches the man watching. The workers dock another ferry, a touring boat painted red and white. Sunny boards his own ferry. He stands at the front on the lowest observation deck and the cold wind is a tonic. Behind him, three college kids laugh and joke. One boy, the blonde with a crew cut, lifts another by the collar, threatens to throw him overboard. Sonny laughs. They turn for the la first time acknowledging Sonny's presence. They like him right away. They can see he's cool and something else too, a Leo or a backwards boy in his shaggy black hair, his eyes that if they dared, they'd call beautiful. The crew cut offers a smoke and Sonny accepts and a friendship is easily woven out of their laughing struggles to ignite a lighter in the stiff wind of their passage. Finally, Sonny turns his back and opens his coat and the college boy dips into this windbreak and lights four cigarettes. They smoke facing Seattle with their backs to Bainbridge Island, their scalps and the napes of their necks freezing. They lift their collars and hunch their shoulders around their ears and no way in hell are they going inside with all the yuppies and the tourists. Sonny passes them his flask of vodka at waist level, hoping the captain, wherever he is, doesn't object. And it doesn't take long for them to get a little silly, for them to wonder if, like on the Space Needle, people really jump off the ferry. Someone says they should put up a net or something, a wall. The boys start jostling one another again, threatening to test out the waters with the smallest of them. And on that deck, in the stiff wind, under the gray sky and before the gray island where ferns grow wild, suddenly the boy with the see-through green eyes flicks his cigarette into the water. He grins and climbs to the top rung of the railing. They are laughing, whooping. How they like their new friend. He is giving them a jaunty wave, and then almost like falling so that later they'll debate the point, and one of them, the boy who bent into the warm shelter of Sonny's open coat, will maintain all his life that it was an accident, a slip. Sonny is jumping. He is disappearing under the blunted prow of the ferry. He is gone. And maybe Sonny leapt, and maybe he fell. Perhaps he was reaching for help and the boys misunderstood, so they told the police Sonny waved. One last thing Sonny offered, mysterious, indecipherable. Such a simple question, Sonny's hand reaching for their own or Sonny waving. But the answer doesn't matter because either way, he's gone and all the answers in the world cannot undrown him.